fit into their corporate culture. Right. So there are companies now that are actually standing up businesses around how do I clean up my social sort of presence on the web before kids actually graduate from college because they've either gone out and taken sort of the pictures at the beach or, or their 21st birthday or what have you. So we got to really make sure that we're educating everybody on this whole issue of sort of their cyber presence, cyber security, so on and so forth. So extremely important. And that's really sort of more of an individual discussion of cybersecurity. But then we also have to talk about our larger federal systems and, and how do we protect those. So there's a lot of challenges around, you know, how to foreign national access, so on and so forth to our system. You've heard a lot of uh, discussions around a number of different um, countries that are not necessarily fringe, uh, friendly to the United States and using cyber now to sort of lay the groundwork for a, an attack. So a lot of, the, a lot of folks are saying, you know, we're going to get away for, from sort of armed conflicts, and really now the attack is really going to be over, over the landline. Yes. Right. And, and so, so, if, so, for example, if I could actually go over the, over, the, over the wire and actually shut down a whole power grid. Right. 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 Or, actually, or, or borrow intellectual properties. Or steal, yeah. steal five cents <laughs> on a dollar from the largest <laughs> bank in the world. Right. You five cents on the dollar. Right. right. You, yeah. see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's a, all of these challenges are now. So that's what we really mean by trying to make it sort of basic for, for the folks. But that's, that's basically what we're trying to do is in this cyber environment, how do you secure what you care about? Listen, we're talking to Adrian Gardner, Chief Information Officer at Say it again. NASA Goddard. NASA Goddard, yes. That center over there. Listen, Robert, I see you holding the line. Listen, to join the conversation, call us at 773-591-1690 with your questions or comments. To all our green ambassadors calling the Greenpreneur Show and connecting to us via iHeartRadio across the United States, Chicago, Illinois, checking in with us. Also, Las Vegas, Nevada, checking in with us. New York, New York. Also, to our global green ambassadors located in Japan, Puerto Rico, Australia, we appreciate your comments on our Facebook fan page and, our my, and at mygreenmag.org. Listen, we'll be right back. Mitchell Jr., well, sophomore? Yeah. Sophomore, yeah. Sophomore in high school from Perspective IIT Math and Science Academy. We definitely want to talk to the youth and see what they're talking about as far as doing this STEM type program. We'll discuss that in one second. But listen, let me go to call lines. Let me grab. I think this is Naomi. Naomi, this is Green for No Radio Show. What's your question or comment for my guest? Uh, climate change? Yes, ma'am. What's your question or comment? Okay. Well, what? What? What's your specific question? Okay. We'll do. The program is based on. Green Entrepreneurship Sustainability. So today we're talking to my guest, and he's with NASA, and we've touched on climate, but we're mainly talking about green jobs, the opportunity in the space for sustainability as a whole. So uh, sustainability, when you talk about sustainability, it's about a holistic approach to different things. So today we're talking about, last we talked about food, which you talked about, organic foods and how that affects you, uh, and that's about living a sustainable life. But this week and today, with my special guest, Aiden, Adrian from NASA, he's uh, kind of touched on climate change, uh, which is AKA global warming. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's, he's touched on that, but I'll have him go a little bit more into climate change and uh, get you up to speed. But definitely listen to our podcast, and we appreciate you calling the Greenpreneur Show. But Adrian, talk to her about uh, uh, climate change just a little bit more, and we'll get into STEM and why is that important. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's de they're definitely related. I mean, when you're talking about climate change, greenhouse gases, the reality is we're looking at how is the environment Im impacting our everyday lives, and what, what are the conscious to the sort of choices and decisions that we're making that actually will impact the way that we sustain the earth. So in, in, in its most basic terms, if you pollute at home, if you have a dirty house, mm -hmm. right, and you don't clean up, right, eventually it is, you're going to either have sickness in the home, you're going to have sort of either, you know, different, different visitors that you probably don't rat, want, rats, roaches, so on and so forth. Right. So if you take that as, a, as sort of a basic example, now think it sort of blow that out to the earth. It's, so are we wise stewards of the resources that the earth is providing us? And so when we talk about climate change, we have to look at how are we impacting the sustainability of the earth? We are making energy choices. We are making sort of 
some choices around what we do um, mil mil from a military standpoint that are impacting our very sustain the sustainability of this earth. So as you look at sort of nuclear power, if you look at solar power, those, all of those things have pluses and, pluses and minus effects on the earth as we know it. And so we, it definitely has a relationship back to greenhouse gases and climate and the like. So we've got to make sure that we have a good understanding of that and understand what, you know, what are the consequences of the choices that we're making. Right, definitely, and we appreciate you giving us a call here at the uh, Green Promote Radio Show name. And I think a lot of times, um, I think that's what we have as listeners, is trying to make the connection and trying to figure out where do they fit into this, and, and they hear this talk, conversation, but what we try to get people to understand here on the Green Promote Radio Show, it's a lifestyle. Right. And it's a lot of things connected. It's all the way to driving your vehicle, putting out emissions from your tailpipe, uh, that you're contributing. Somehow you're part responsible for the situation we're in. And, and I know a lot of people uh, just in general don't want to be responsible, but this is about being responsible right. and being a great steward. And uh, with Earth Day being on Monday, we're talking about that from a holistic standpoint, a lifestyle standpoint. But listen, let's jump right into STEM. And uh, when people hear the term STEM, what are they referring to? Uh, so STEM really refers to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so what we're saying is we really want to begin to focus our students and our young folks into those disciplines because those are sort of the, the, the disciplines and the jobs of the future. So if you look at, we, and we have a shortage in those areas across the board. We, if you look at the United States right now, we are losing the competitive edge from a standpoint of the number of children that we educate in those fields. All of those jobs are either going overseas or actually, you know, or they're, they're not going, they're not actually being filled. Well, so, that, so one of the things that we have to do is begin to focus our, our, our sort of our, our youth and our academic institutions on those particular disciplines because the way that we're training them today may not fit the need for the future job, the jobs of the future climate. How many kids are actually involved in that? When we talk about robotics, how many of our children are actually involved in that? And it's a very small minority. Right, definitely. And that's why we have Ms. Janelle in the studio with us, because you're working on a program at school in reference to robotics. And a lot of times, often, Adrian, we always talk about our youth, but we never listen to our youth. So I want to make sure Ms. Janelle came into the studio with us today. Talk about us. You're doing some stuff over at your school with robotics now? Yeah, um, I'm a part of my school's uh, first robotics team. And recently, we just won the uh, Midwest Regional in Chicago. So we're going to the world. And that was and what's your team number? Uh, 2709. You rock. You rock. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I mean, I, that was cold word. That sounded like some NASA uh, interagency <laughs> stuff. What's 2709 represent, Chanel? Um, it represents our team number and our school. That's just it. That's just it? So what, so what is this STEM? I mean, you're familiar with STEM and, and robots. What is this doing for you as a student? Uh, learning-wise? Is it engaging you? Maybe you haven't looked at science or maybe you've looked at science. Uh, what is it doing for you as a student pretty much to be a part of this competition? Um, well, my school is uh, predominantly focused on math and science period, so robotics, it just involves the engineering aspect and it allows us to be well, all types of fields as far as, you know, Gives you a lot of exposure. Yeah. Right. That's good. So and let me give you a little yeah. background. So I mean, she's she, she's underselling what they, what she's doing. Okay. So so not only are they, are they doing engineering, they're doing engineering, they're doing software, they're doing marketing plans around their particular robot. That's why when I asked about her team number, there's a whole piece of it that they have to actually go out and market their robot, like create a business plan around their robot, what the strategy is for their robot. So I, I, actually, I, I, are you in, are you in on that, Janelle? Because I can't tell. Are you in on that? Yeah. Okay. Are you are, were you in school that day? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Go ahead. Yeah. Now. I mean, it's it's it is cause, because it, and I don't know if you if you if you haven't experienced first robotics, it's actually it, what they do is they take the robot and they create sort of a sport or game, right? This year's game is the ultimate ascent, right? Which is mm -hmm. where they where they actually have the robots that can fire actually frisbees through a through the three separate goals. Then they have sort of a pyramid in them, and this is sort of like on a basketball court size sort of sort of venue. Yeah. Then they have two pyramids in the middle where one of the one of the things that they do is that the robot has to be able to ascend and actually pull itself up 
this pyramid. So, for example, I, I just judged the regional about in, in D.C. about three weeks ago. We had a robot actually hit to the third tier, which which means that it had it, the it, the robot could actually pull itself up this pyramid three levels up. So go ahead, not only and actually pull it. This is, these are like about almost like 200 to 300 pound sort of robots that these kids work. They, they actually get six weeks to build this robot, right. actually figure out sort of what their game strategy is, and then actually build it, build the, the the robot, and then send it to competition. And then they do a whole thing around marketing plans, around sort of what's the what's the gaming strategy. Some some of the some of the robots can actually you know are, are top fed. In other words, I feed the the frisbees into the top of it. Some of them can actually pick them up from the floor and shoot. Um, there's there's a whole thing around sort of you know um, uh, sort of hardware and software where they, where they're actually programmed what they call t autonomous. Where for about first first 15 to 20 seconds or 30 seconds of the game. The robot itself had to actually, they had to put a software program into the robot that it would program it to actually shoot through the goal by itself. So first of all, I know you're working at NASA, right. but Janelle, is he correct? Yeah, he okay, okay. I, I, just, I, just, I just wanted to verify uh, because I wanted to make sure that he was correct. You know, we've always got to check our experts. Well, listen, let me go to call lines. Let me grab Lewis. Lewis, what's your question or comments for my guest today? Holistic kind of situation and we have to look at it from a bigger standpoint you know how can you use science how can you use technology uh, to reduce uh, uh, killing of you know wildlife and those type of things so we'll yeah and, it's, and you know it's not so so this this is not an engineering problem right this is a human problem right. I mean they're 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 killing those animals for ivory right. which is a resource mm -hmm. right and they're selling that on the open market so this is a business issue and and so you have these countries that are impacted by you know the the uh, the just the shameless um, killing of these of these innocent animals, and so you know th there's a whole challenge around that. So it's really about what is our, what are our moral decisions that we're making. Mm -hmm. So I have to go back and really question that piece of it, and because somebody on the on the other side of the world really values that ivory, so somebody in Africa now is killing an innocent animal. That is endangered mm -hmm. to meet that need. Right. So, so what what makes that okay? Well, you, you got to reduce the demand. I Correct. mean, it's, well, it's kind of like you know, you, you know, uh, to say that we're addicted to fossil fuel as we come on air and tell people and people to be in denial. I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. Correct. Right. So you know, all the harm. If you want to stop war or different things like that, if there's no demand for fossil fuel, then there's no need for certain wars. Right. So these are the realities of the situation. And again, going back to being good stewards. And, and being responsible, uh, but also educating yourself and getting out there. I mean, I, I take uh, pride in knowing Janelle. I mean, these youth, I mean, they have so much access. They go to Google or wherever. They can put in a certain term and word. They go out, and if they're inquisitive, they can find out about those things. But listen, let's get back to the STEM conversation. And, and what would you advise or suggest students um, uh, to do or to uh, start to get involved in STEM if they're just hearing this term? Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my big thing is, you know, if you just take the FIRST Robotics program, you know, they on their website, they list that they have, this is for 2013 now, 100, 160 scholarship providers, 875 individual scholarship opportunities, and over $16 million in 2013 that are available to these students. So Janelle has the opportunity, when, as, through this experience, of actually a free ride to school potentially. Well, I know her mother would love that. Are you paying attention to this, Janelle? You got your pen out? Yeah. Are you writing down? Because I know you just figured mom was going to pay for, uh, for you to go to school. But uh, I think mom is listening to this information about these scholarships. What do you think? Yeah, I think she is. You think so? Yeah. Well, also we got in the studio with us Reverend Johnson. And, and Reverend Johnson is, is one of our faithful uh, uh Followers and workers of being good stewards of the earth, and uh, he's working on that uh, workforce development. But you wanted to comment real quickly in reference to uh, what Adrian was talking about about these scholarships and uh, education and jobs. Stan. I really did, and thank you so much, Michael, for having us on the program on today. And I wanted to do a green thumbs up to. Oh, that's right, because we don't do shout outs here. <laughs> green thumbs up to tomorrow's youth foundation. And Adrian, you'll be glad to know that here in the greater Chicagoland area, we have several not-for-profits that have just received STEM grants uh, to do tutoring and to teach science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And I'm also pleased to have with me in the studio today one of your early 
robotics competitors. Mm -hmm. That will be my little 14 year old, not quite too little anymore, amen? I'm telling you, ain't no more. Some years ago at McDade, they participated in the elementary division of that robotics program. A quick green thumbs up to our governor who's listening right now, Governor Quinn, who encouraged high school and elementary school students to participate in the robotics program, and we are so pleased to have you here, yep. and we're going to get as much as we can out of you, because we need about 9,900 more STEM programs coming out of the Greenpreneur Radio Show. Absolutely. I know, listen, if you just joined us or just tuning in, listen, we're talking to Adrian Gardner, Chief Information Officer at Goddard uh, Space Flight Center, a NASA National uh, Aeronautics and Space Administration, and we're talking about uh, green jobs. We're talking about the opportunity to educate our youth and move forward. We're also talking about climate change and understanding how all these things connect. And we need to make the connections and understand what role we play in that. And if people do not know uh, what you do, Adrian, you run the mission data network for NASA. Uh, so anytime there's a spacecraft that leaves the atmosphere of the Earth, uh, for the United States perspective, your team tracks that. Is that correct? That's absolutely true. That's good. And so, you know, so let's talk a little bit about that. You have any plans going to space? I don't personally have them. I'm a little old now. Oh, I, no, is there a certain turn off that to go to space? There is for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Right, right. The bowls are starting to creep. But, but you know, I, I would say, you know, what I look forward to is that if you look at now space travel, we, you know, we're really moving to a point in sort of the early stages in which, you know, if you talk about, think about airline travel, we're at that point now where, where people are actually can see the opportunity for them, for them personally to actually go to space. So that's extremely important. Well, you know, you, well, but you know, I, I haven't been I haven't been out out of space yet. I mean, I almost never out of Chicago sometimes. Right. But here's, here's why I'm saying that. You know, what are, what are the benefits of being in space? I mean, maybe you could bring a different perspective for me because I mean, it's one thing to look back at Earth, right? I'm sure that's amazing. But when I'm just out there, I mean, what kind of data are you gathering that's significant and beneficial to us? Besides weather, correct. Yeah. So, so one of the things that you just mentioned is, and and, and we want to we want to sort of highlight it is that really looking at Earth from space. So, for example, whenever we when we saw Hurricane Katrina, just imagine the view of Hurricane Katrina from the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? It looks at the amount of impact that it has on the Earth. It looks at how it's traversing the Earth, and then it looks at sort of the before and after. So that's one aspect of it. The other aspect is really now looking at, you know, if, if you look at our space exploration um, activities in general, is there, there are a lot, there's a lot that we can learn from those other bodies in our solar system. In other words, why are we going to Mars? You know, why did we, why did we land this rover on Mars? And we have this, this instrument that was actually built at, at Goddard called the Sample Analysis of Mars, the SAM instrument, that actually now is saying, going back and actually excavating the, the soil and, and taking, um, sort of bringing data back on, you know, is there, is there, were there remnants of life on Mars? So there's a lot that we can learn from those, those, those sort of planets that have actually gone through this whole um, cycle where they're no longer habitable for humans. And, and then sort of applying that back to Earth from a standpoint of, if we look at what happened to that planet that caused it to be sort of no longer meet the needs of, of human life, are there things that we can learn from that and then apply that back to Earth? Because well, there's, there, again, there are, there are decisions that we are making and there are small changes in the solar system, I mean, in the, in the, in the, um, in the environmental sort of system that are causing different challenges to our, to our Earth. So for example, if you look at even if you look at mosquito populations, you look at frogs, people are saying, what do frogs have to do with humans? Well, we're all connected. There's all this, there's this huge connection between us. So one of the things that we do is actually study those bodies sort of from Earth out, and then from, then from study space from Earth, from Earth, from space to Earth, because we can draw conclusions. Well, you know, I, I appreciate you being in NASA, but what I'm really going to tell you, I ain't got to go to space to know that we need to do something different right here on this planet. And all I got to say is Google Easter Island. Listen, let me give a green thumbs up to Bernie Sanders, Senator of Vermont.
climate change is real and he wants the Environmental Protection Agency to be vigorous in protecting our children and our future generations. Also, let me give a green thumbs up to the scientific community, acknowledging 2012 was the warmest year ever recorded for the continental United States. Also recorded 24,000 new record temperature highs throughout the United States. Also, let me give a green thumbs up to Arkansas State's Attorney General to look into ExxonMobil's pipeline rupture and oil spill due to it being sustainably uh, substantially larger than previously thought by their so-called experts. Listen, stay, con stay connected. This is the greenest guy you know. We'll be right. Thank so much, Q. Thanks, Carl Green, for doing the show. Listen, we, we got to get. I was talking to my boy. Huh? We got to get some kind of bells or something, and you know, some kind of ringing when we get them first-time callers. That means we got one off the fence. That means that's one more person paying attention to what's going on in the environment and neighborhood. And if you see anybody in your neighborhood that doesn't look like you, and they're picking up paper. They don't work there. They're celebrating Earth Day 9 out of 10. So, and if they're picking up paper in your neighborhood, you might want to look at that. That's another story. But listen, Adrian, talk to our uh, listeners and tell them again what your big plans are over at NASA. I mean, this guy is, he's, he's dynamic. I think we need to know, and our youth need to know, and that's why we brought Ms. Janelle in the studio with us today. We want people of African-American descent to see other African-Americans in powerful positions and great positions and out there doing the work, doing the work and making a difference. And like you said, Adrian, bringing our perspective to the table, because I tell people all the time, if you're not at the table, you are on the menu. So Adrian, tell us what the listeners need to know about you Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. You started the program with one term, innovation. Yeah. That's the other piece that we didn't really get into. But we, if you think about it, there are opportunities out there through STEM education for the next sort of generation of innovators. You know, I told you I went to Tuskegee Institute, George Washington Carver, if you look at what he did, he was, a, he was an innovator. You know, early on in his career, he, he sort of collaborated with Henry T. Ford. People don't know that. You know, he, he's a, everybody think about him, thinks about him from a standpoint of Peanut. peanut butter. That's it. But he had 400 different agricultural products that he brought to market yes. in his lifetime. And so, so what we're looking for is really now saying, this is really part of our history. STEM is part of our history. We sort of have, have sort of forgotten a little bit about that. But now moving these students and, and, and young folks into STEM and actually getting them engaged is extremely important. So if you, you know, just as a parting shot, if you guys want to want to go to the FIRST Robotics website, it's www.usfirst.org. If you want to go to data.gov, it's www.data.gov. And then if you want to just reach out to me personally, it's adrian.gardner at nasa.gov. Adrian, spelled A-D-R-I-A-N, dot gardner, G-A-R-D-N-E-R, at nasa, N-A-S-A, dot gov. Listen, green ambassadors, are you greening your habits like recycling for a better life? I think if you have any sense of wonder or faith in humanity, you would agree that Earth Day is an extraordinary event. I believe every single country will take action and service to our planet. What I discovered in my life's work, forewarned is forearmed. Janelle, thank you so much for joining us here at the Green Panel Radio Show. Can I get a wink? I got away from Janelle. Good. I am so grateful you chose to listen to the voice of a green nation. Thank you for keeping it 100% green.